In this video, I'm going to show you how I was able to rank on the first page of Google for multiple keywords in just 30 days, adding over 300 brand new keywords ranking for my website with just 18 blog posts written within two weeks and growing my daily Google Search Console impressions 20x with just two weeks of work. I'll be sharing my overall SEO strategy and my content creation workflow for how I was able to create page one ranking blog posts in two hours or less each and what's working right now in 2023. But real quick, before we dive into that, I just want to issue this 30 day challenge. So I was able to write a little bit over one post per day over the course of two weeks. And during the month of September in 2023, if you can write 15 brand new published blog posts on your website, or if you can hit over 40 plus total blog posts on your website, if you have existing posts in the past, then I will record a free personalized analysis of your website and your business and how to further optimize your SEO and to get further growth. All right, so jumping back into this case study. So essentially what I did over the course of two weeks back in May, I actually wrote 18 blog posts on my personal brand website. Going back here into my website, I can show you when that started. So my first post that was part of this push was around May 13th. So if I actually go into my blog here, uh, you can see that there's a big gap of posting on my website between 2022, 2023, back in January, and then I begin posting in May. So you can see between May 13th all the way to May 25th is when I stopped posting. So that's about a two week period. And the results of that is I was able to essentially 20X my daily search console impressions. And you can see here, we're over a thousand daily uh, search console impressions. And then going into Ahrefs, you can see over the last few months, we've added over 340 organic keywords. And in addition to that, we're also currently ranking on page one, as you can see for multiple keywords. And we have a ton of keywords that are also ranking on page two. Uh, some of these quite competitive, as you can see, 30 KD right here. So if you actually look at Ahrefs uh, metrics here, you will see that anything above 30 is considered hard, anything over 10 is considered medium. So basically this has been a very accelerated time frame of ranking on Google and ranking highly anywhere as high as page one, but many in page two. Uh, so basically I'm gonna walk you through the content and my process for how I'm able to get these results faster and maybe you can replicate this for your business. So let's start with step one. Keyword research is so important. So I'm here in Ahrefs and I'm gonna walk you through how I identify good keyword opportunities for my website. So when I'm looking at opportunities, one of the first things that jumps out to me, especially if you're kind of just starting out now, what I like to do is I like to filter by KD first because the keyword difficulty essentially is gonna you know, determine how feasible is this, especially if you have a brand new domain. Honestly, I would aim for anything less than a 10 keyword difficulty for beginners. Now, I am using Ahrefs, it is an expensive software, it's $99 a month. My recommendation is you create a keyword list, you would export all these as a CSV. I would get around 300 to 500 keywords. Uh, even then, I mean, if you make one post per keyword, it's not likely that you're gonna get 300 blog posts done in anywhere close to a year. Uh, it's probably gonna take you many years to cover all of those. So I would just do my keyword research, I would export all of it, and you can do all this in a spreadsheet instead. So for me, if I was just really starting out, one way to kind of drill down on really good opportunities is I would basically set the KD as high as 10. So I'll apply that. And then what I would do is the volume, 400 volume, just to see if we can get this number down. And you can see we're at 50 keywords right now. If I add those filters, this is probably gonna cut down to half. So you can see here there's 20. And what I do love seeing is I love seeing, you know, this high volume 5.5K. And then you can see here, it's only a 5KD, which is really easy to go after. You really need to focus on the things that are like zero, one, two, three, four, five in terms of the KD, because as you go up, it really gets difficult. And there's almost no point in going after anything above like a, a 30, in my opinion, if you have a brand new domain, at least to start. Now that we have our keywords, and these are essentially the keywords that I chose to go after in this two week stretch, let's jump into the actual content creation workflow for how I was able to create these posts. So one post I'm gonna show you guys, which was this Lululemon one, which again, it's gotten over 315 visits in just the last 30 days. So that means clicks, which is much more than impressions. Um, it's not just, you know, showing up on Google search console or showing up on the Google search. This is actually people who saw my uh, Lululemon 
blog post and they click through and they visit my website from it. So let's go take a look at that blog post, see what I did there and let me uh, basically reverse engineer or deconstruct how I was able to create this ranking content that's getting hundreds of visits. And all of these blog posts that I created, I did within two hours or less each because I have my workflow down uh, to a science. So what I do is I would actually take this keyword and I will just search it up. So as you can see here, I've uh, searched up Lululemon affiliate program, and I've actually done this in incognito because I don't want any of my settings from my Google Chrome profile to adversely affect kind of like the baseline results of searches. I don't want it to be based on geolocation or anything like that. I want it to just be show me the pure results without any cookies or whatever. So here I am in incognito. You can see that the first link is gonna be Lululemon, so that makes sense. But then you're also gonna see some posts that are gonna be similar to the posts that I'm trying to replicate or I'm trying to model my posts after because what better way than seeing what's already ranking on page one. Uh, so I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna find something that's a little closer uh, to the content I want to create. And as you can see here, we have this blog right here, which I think this gives us a pretty good um, idea because when I'm looking at this right here, basically you see these headings. So one thing you could do is I can kind of just see, you know, uh, what is the format? Are they using H2s? They're using H2s uh, for their headings, which is what I recommend as well. And you can see how they're answering questions. So this gives me an idea. Okay, so the content is gonna be very much FAQ based. It's answering a lot of uh, questions about the Lululemon affiliate program. So I already got that. I know sort of the structure, they got these uh, H2 headings. Um, so I'm gonna go back. Now, the other thing that I take from this is I'm gonna look at the people also ask. So does Lululemon have an affiliate program? How much does Lululemon pay affiliates? How does it set up affiliate, uh, Lululemon affiliate program? So you can see here, I wrote this, uh, it looks like May 17th. Uh, and the thing about writing blog posts, guys, is you just don't know which one is gonna blow up and go viral. That's why you need to just write as many as possible. Uh, but anyways, let me jump into here. Um, this is a custom image that I created in Canva. It actually only takes me like a couple minutes to do once you have a template going. It's literally swapping out the logo for the company, but moving into the actual content itself. So as you can see here, the total word count is actually under 600 words. So it's not super long, but it's not super short. I would consider a short article to be under 300 or 400 words. This is enough to obviously rank on Google and to get hundreds of visits. So obviously this is good enough. So basically I'm gonna walk you through the content top to bottom. At the top here, I just have this intro paragraph and I actually have an external link to a high domain rating website that is viewed as reputable, statista.com. So I like to use external links. Now, one way to create very good external links to reputable sources is to use domains that have like a .edu or even like a .gov. Uh, in this case, obviously, I'm using a, a .com, but still Statista is a very you know trusted source. So I start off with an intro paragraph right there, and then I just immediately jump into H2 headings. So now you'll see from here, I'm actually kind of piggybacking off of the people also ask. You can see the first question does lululemon have an affiliate program and i'm basically trying to get a featured snippet from there and uh you can see i've answered that question here so another thing that i think is interesting with my um structure is i actually mentioned a win here and i actually do have a post on a win so i do need to update this and i need to internally link a win because that is a great way to build a contextual internal link which is actually more important than external links i try and aim for three to four internal links uh, per page and you'll see that. So basically these are H2 headings right here. Um, H2s to me, they show higher priority when it comes to the HTML of your website to the Google, uh, whether it's crawling, uh, the Google bot, you know, it needs to be able to read your page. And one way you do that is through HTML tags. Uh, a big mistake that beginners make is that they don't use the right HTML tags or they don't use any HTML tags at all. They, instead of doing H2, H3, they kind of just bold it and make it bigger. And that's not good enough for Google to kind of pick up on, okay, how is your content structured? Again, I'm answering another, people also ask, how much do affiliate, Lululemon affiliates make? And this is also a question that's common of every single affiliate program review. Everyone wants to know what's the commission rate? How much are they paying? And so basically I give them the commission rate right here. I make it bold so it's easy to read. Uh, and then basically I also even give an estimate for how much that could be per sale. And then moving on, how do you get approved for Lululemon's affiliate program? So this is a question I think I include in every single blog post I have about affiliate program reviews. Uh, I talk about, you know, you need an AWIN network account. And then also 
I make it a little easier because this is the type of websites that they're likely to approve. And I just make it easier for people to understand, you know, what are the requirements, the criteria. And then I also link to an internal link to one of my other blog posts, which is this affiliate marketing beginners guide. If you need help creating, uh, you know, a media or a blogging or an editorial website so that you could get approved for something like this. And then here, this is basically a related post section, but I give it a different heading of where some other affiliate programs and networks to join. And you'll see that this is actually an H3. The reason I didn't wanna make this an H2 is because this is not as high of priority as these um, headings right here. The ones that are specifically answering Lululemon questions and FAQs, those are gonna be H2s. H3 is for everything below that, that is kind of like not related to the main keyword. So as you can see here, I link a lot of my posts. These are two pillar posts right here, like best affiliate programs for beginners. Okay, so I want to say one more thing about these H2 headings right here. It's key that you use these for related keywords, and that's how I was able to rank for hundreds of keywords with only 18 new blog posts, because do the math. How is it possible to only write 18 blog posts, but start ranking your website for hundreds of new keywords? Just to sum it up, each one of these posts is ranking for multiple keywords with every single post. Beginners, the mistake they make is they're not as efficient. They create one post that targets one keyword and it can only rank for that one keyword. Instead, I'm casting a much wider net so I can have a single post that's ranking for you know four or five, maybe even as much as 10 keywords, depending on how long tail it is. All right, so another section that's very critical is your meta. Your meta title, your meta description, and even your URL. These are things that I make sure to edit and I make sure to optimize every single time. So from the beginning, the meta title here, you can see I actually have the keyword at the very beginning. I think you should try to prioritize having the keyword in the very beginning of your meta title as much as possible. You can see for the URL, I've only done the keyword. The problem is some people have titles that are gonna be way too long. You know, they'll do this as their entire uh, URL and honestly, it just looks ugly. It's not as short and sweet. And I just want this to match the keyword as much as possible. So it's simple, it's easy to read. And also when you're looking at the search results, you might be able to see the keyword, you know, in this like kind of breadcrumb trail in terms of the linking here. Maybe that's kind of like a better match just psychologically, you know, to what people are searching up actually. And then the last but not least is the meta description. Just make sure you have a meta description that gets people to want to click. And the way I think about this is it's kind of like a YouTube thumbnail. If your YouTube thumbnail and your title is not optimized and it's not good, you're going to have a low CTR, a low click-through rate. And that low click-through rate is going to hurt you in terms of people clicking through and actually viewing your content. All right. So going back, one more thing I want to stress is the linking. You can see this related post having links to all your other posts is a very powerful mechanism for seo it's one way to signal to google that your website is interconnected so if i go back to a page like this this is a pillar page it is literally forward slash affiliate marketing and this is the h1 this is the title of the page and i have a ton of content that is linking uh to all my affiliate marketing you know content uh blog posts guides etc and then in addition to that, you can see I have this best affiliate programs and networks. I have everything linked here. And then every one of these individual posts is interlinked with each other. So I'm linking to all the other posts out from each individual post. So essentially the way I'm trying to you know explain this is you have the hub and the spoke. Uh, the hub right here is best affiliate programs and networks or the bigger hub is even affiliate marketing period. And then I would say the spokes are all the individual posts that are underneath that category. So when you have all these internal links, what's awesome is when you submit your sitemap to Google, Google is able to crawl your website and have a better idea of your site structure. All right, so basically that wraps up my content creation workflow. You can just see here again, just from 14 days of work, we were able to 20X our daily impressions. And you can also see that our uh, average position has been rising as well. You can see over time, um, average position through this whole period is only 45, but we're getting up to an average position of the third page of Google on average, which is awesome. All right, guys, so if you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button below. It really helps me out. And also leave a comment below letting me know your thoughts if you got value from this video, if it was helpful. And the last thing I wanna show you guys is I have a completely free course. All you have to do is go to my website, odiproductions.com, link in description, and you can sign up here. You'll get a link to sign up for the course on Teachable. Here is a preview of the curriculum. You can see I have a ton of modules here, um, hours and hours worth of free content. This is my best you know, free affiliate marketing training out there. 
And if you want to get more content, I also have a podcast. You can search it up on Spotify or on Apple. It's called Affiliate Marketing Millionaire. Uh, it's got a ton of great five-star reviews and looking uh, to you know release weekly episodes for you guys. So make sure you check that out. But that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions, make sure to leave it in the comments below. But let's get the September 30-day challenge. Let's go hard. There's always so much more to improve. Tons of little things, little details, you know, website structure, on-page SEO, etc. And there's always so much more opportunities. So I can't wait to see um, what you guys have, but hope you guys enjoy it. Catch you on the next one.